Hello there. A few weeks ago, just about the middle of July, I made a, an FOI request of the Countess of Chester Hospital. And my request was as follows. Dear Sir, Madam, FOI request, please can you send me the following information regarding Countess of Chester Hospital neonatal unit for the years 2014 to 2017. What infection control measures were in place and what testing was done in and around the neonatal unit at the Countess of Chester Hospital over the years 2014 to 2017. Please can you send copies of assessments carried out over this period showing pathogens tested for and results of statutory testing undertaken and also details of any remedial actions taken over this same period. Thank you. And today I've had the FOI response. I've got it up on the screen now so you can read it at your leisure but I'll just read, read it out. Dear requester, re request for information under the Freedom of Information Act 2000, reference number 8134. Thank you for your correspondence dated 12th of the 7th, 24, blah, blah, blah. You requested the following information and our response is detailed below. So my request, as they've put it, they haven't put all the details that I read out to you there, but they've truncated it and just stated it stated my request as what infection control measures were in place and what testing was done in and around the neonatal unit at the Countess of Chester Hospital over the years 2014 to 2017 and their answer as you can read yourself <clears throat> but I'll read it out the trust has considered this request in the context of the current ongoing legal processes concerning the trusts neonatal services and does not intend to disclose any such information held by the trust for the reasons given below. The trust relies on section 31 of the Freedom of Information Act 2000 in not disclosing the information namely sections 31.1 a b and c and g together with sections 31 open brackets to close brackets a to d there are ongoing criminal investigations and processes following on from the conviction of lucy letby the information requested may be of relevance to those investigations and processes at this stage the trust considers that any disclosure of the information requested into the public domain would be likely to prejudice the ongoing criminal processes the Trust acknowledges that the information requested is likely to be of public interest and that it may be in the public interest for some of the information requested to be disclosed. It is likely that such information will be disclosed into the public domain at some point during the criminal and current inquiry processes, subject to any restrictions on disclosure or publications or publication, sorry that may be put in place by the courts or inquiry. However, at this stage, the Trust considers that preventing prejudice to the ongoing investigation processes by the non-disclosure of such information outweighs the public interest in disclosure. Right, and then it just says about you've got a right to appeal, which obviously there's no point, they're not gonna uphold an appeal, are they? So what are we to make of that? I think it's giving a strong hint that they're going to, at least they're saying that they're aware of further investigations. Are they going to try to bring further charges against Lucy Letby? Because, because of this, this outpouring of grave and serious concern over the convictions. They're kind of trying to, that's their mode of fighting back. We know from Evans' own mouth and from via Cheshire Police that they had been going back over 
years before the two years in question, right back to when Lucy Letby began working at the uh, Countess of Chester Hospital. I think it was in December 2011, and then, or she may have actually started formally in early 2012. So there's a good, um, we've got three or four years there, um, 11, 12, 13, 40, yeah, four years. And we've heard from Evans in certain interviews that he's got concerns over certain things he's seen. What he mentioned in particular were dislodged, dislodged breathing tubes. But of course, knowing Evans, he won't be interested in any dislodged breathing tubes when Lucy Letby's not on duty. So it's it's going to be if if it does if they do follow through with this, it will just be the same modus operandi as we had before, as we've had all along, a continuation of the framing, because they know that it's not going to go away for them. And what else can they do other than go forward? They're doubling down, tripling down, they're going forward. That's what it's suggesting to me. Of course, they're bringing in the idea of the, the, pub, the soon to come out public inquiry as well. What strikes me about this answer is that, as far as I'm aware, the prosecution, apart from arguing that, oh, the plumbing issues didn't, in a general sense, the plumbing issues and the leaking pipes, leaking hospital wastewater, didn't have a salient effect on causing the, the deaths of these babies that Lucy Letby was charged and convicted of murdering and attacking. However, they didn't explicitly or even implicitly state that the police investigation or the prosecution's case had any specific exculpatory evidence to show that the hospital was not was not sort of basically infused with these pathogens going around because of those plumbing issues and perhaps because of other issues to do with the cleanliness there that there wasn't in fact a through line of sepsis being probably the main issue for the vast majority of deaths that occurred to all the babies across 2015 and 2016 and which I'm waiting, the res I'm waiting for the result of another FOI request to do with why <clears throat> as I've mentioned in previous videos it's to do with why in August 2015 and August 2016 there are no deaths showing on the previous FOI request, but there are, we're meant to believe, two murders happened in those two months. I suspect they've miscoded those deaths as stillbirths. Why did they do that? But I'm waiting for the, the results of the, uh, the questions I've asked as an FOI request. I sent them at the, roughly the same time as this one, so hopefully I'll have that back soon. But going back to the point I was making just a minute ago, that there was no part of the police investigation that I'm aware of, or the prosecution's case that I'm aware of, in which they said, look, we know that Lucy Letby's defence are trying to say, and this is why <coughs> the only, the only def defence witness called was the plumber, as you'll remember. So, but we didn't hear the prosecution say, well, we can see you trying to make a case that these babies died because they were, they were ill and they likely had signs of sepsis, or they did all have signs of sepsis, and it was caused by a major problem um, of pathogens on the ward, perhaps principally due to the hospital wa wastewater leakage. They didn't do that because they had, that wasn't a line of investigation because they hadn't done that, despite despite what Detective Hughes says as hoping it was a bad bug in the water. He says that in that kind of really uneducated, stupid way, doesn't he, really, in the sense that it shows that... He, he, what he didn't say is, well, we, we swabbed all the... We had someone swab all the areas to test for, for pathogens and we looked through all their infection control protocols and what had been tested and what had come up at the hospital over the years. Um, the years that were being looked at 2015 and 2016 he didn't say that 
and that's conspicuous by its absence. So he generalised it, just saying into his vague hope that it, oh, it could have been a bad bug in the water. But we know from that, and we know from the, the lack of it in the prosecution, and thereby the lack of it in the police investigation, that they had no intention and no efforts were made to establish whether there were certain pathogens. I think the term is, what is it called now? Uh, the biofilm that can, that can be created when you've got sewage and hospital wastewater leaking like that. The biofilm that can be, that can be created over taps, over sink areas, and then be transferred through people washing hands into into the incubators and cots and other equipment and onto the nurses themselves and doctors themselves uh, and be airborne as well they literally be in the air these pathogens one that people are homing in on there is people looking into this um, Richard Gill and other people on Twitter I'm not sure I can pronounce this very well but it's a particular bacterial pathogen I suppose a bacteria called which can cause sepsis, which is called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudo, no, pseudo, pseudo, sorry, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And that's what people are suspecting. And that's certainly what uh, Dr. Michael McConville, I think, uh, and I believe um, Dr. Scott McLaughlin and Richard Gill and other, other Twitter commentators uh, who are following this case very closely, who have medical backgrounds, nurses and other doctors, are considering might be a candidate for what caused a great upsurge in sepsis here. <clears throat> Why I asked in, in my FOI request about the remedial measures is because I suspect that they know that that was the case. I suspect that they know that that was the case, that that, that was a very infected unit as it were and, may, and maybe that also ties into why they've never they've never raised it up to a level 2 again to an intent they've never raised it up to a level 2 intensive care unit with babies of high acuity and a much lower gestational age and had they supplied me with the remedial both the reports saying what, what infection control measures they're taken perhaps Pseudomonas aeruginosa would have come up very clearly and perhaps it would have also come up about the remedial measures they'd taken they'd taken I've just thought of something just as I'm talking and this kind of thing happens when I'm talking is that there's a piece of film in 2021 in which in which we're seeing the old a sort of a tour around the, the old nurseries, the old separate rooms, one, two, three, and four, that Lucy Letby used to work in, in the unit. And they're all effectively mothballed. They're sort of being used as storage rooms or nothing's got happening in them. This is 2021. Not sure about the status of those rooms now. Is it possible that they, they decided to do that, basically put them off limits as clinical rooms because they knew that they were still possibly infected with this biofilm of pathogens Pseudomonas aeruginosa being one of them perhaps it's very suspicious isn't it it's suspicious that they don't want to they're in full self-protection mode the NHS here as a whole and this trust in particular and the lawyers will be crawling all over this um a friend from a group that I'm in, um, I won't mention any names, said that they're wondering whether this Guardian article that is due to be coming, that hasn't come out yet, but was due to be coming, a, I don't know, about 10 days ago, but has been stalled for some reason. Maybe this is potentially linked to inside information that they've got with regard to pathogens that were clearly tested for and found over those salient years and it's, it's in the hospital documentation that they now don't want to share with you know a freedom of information request so I'll leave that leave that with you all and um, it's it's very I think it's speaking volumes 
you know, uh, the dark side of it is that it's suggesting they're going to be going for more charges. But this kind of hubris, to keep doing that, I think it's going to work against them as well. I mean, it's horrific that they would do it, but it might work against them as they're going... I was going to say they'll be going for weaker and weaker cases, but they're all weak. They're all they're all non-existent. <laughs> they're all non-existent. There's no evidence at all against Lucy Letby, but and what they're trying to do here, I believe, is to hide the signs and the symptoms and the information that would point in a direction that many people have already assumed is the case because of the <clears throat> many signs of sepsis that all the babies on the indictment sheet. And no doubt the other babies that died there and crashed that they are showing in the, in the hospital notes and in the information that came out through the trial so thank you very much for listening and all the best and if I do get some more information with regard to those strangely missing deaths on the, on the previous FOI request for August and October 2015 then I'll, I'll let you know about that. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.